What's up, everyone? Welcome back to The Supper Suite at TIFF 2022 for another interview. I have two of the filmmakers behind North Normal here. Huge congratulations on your movie. Thank you. Thank My you so heart. much. Double congratulations for you, too, because high school Thank is wonderful. We're going to get to both, but we got to start with North of Normal here. Carly, I'm sorry. You're going to have to do this a million times during this festival. For anybody out there who does not know what your movie is about just yet, can you give a brief synopsis? For sure. Um, it's based on a memoir written by C. Sunrise Person about her unconventional childhood living off-grid in the Canadian wilderness with her family. And it's a mother-daughter story about her relationship with her mom and how they kind of translated their relationship from the wilderness to the city. And it takes place in the 70s and 80s. You were very ready for that. I have never been that ready before, <laughs> honestly. I'm very <laughs> impressed. And it's also very early, like semi late into the festival. Um, I was reading your director statement, and it was making me wonder, how do you think the movie would have turned out differently had you made it before you became a mother yourself? I think that Michelle would have probably been a, I hate this word, but I'll use it anyway, a less likable character. Um, I wanted I thought giving her more empathy empathy for the character was an interesting way to approach her character after I became a mother uh, I wanted to be uncomfortable with how we feel about her and not just be black and white whether she's a good mother or a bad mother and I know there is an answer but it's a little bit more nuanced. It's great success in that respect. It makes it feel like a very full engaging experience across the board with those perspectives. Amanda, oh my, I have to say it again, you're having quite the TIFF 2022 right now. So Thank much so to much. celebrate. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first leading role in a feature film for you? That's correct, yeah. Wow, wow, okay. So jumping into this, is there any particular part of the process of what it takes to lead a film that you thought like, that's gonna be the most difficult thing for me? And did that turn out to be the most difficult thing or did something else catch you by surprise? I think just, um, generally leading a film versus leading this film, I could maybe give two separate answers because I feel like um, I was one of the younger people on set and I feel like having people like Carly and Sarah and Robert who were great collaborators and people to work with that I didn't feel like pressure to lead in any way. Um, and... Although, like, you know, being a lead of, lead of a film is um, a big responsibility, um, I, f I didn't feel, um, and like, a ton of pressure, especially from Carly. She was so generous and gentle and attentive, and that was my second job I had ever done, and it, this was Carly's second film, so I felt really safe with her, and I felt like she really understood me, and... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know I, if that answered your question. But. No, it does. It does. But I can't believe this is your, you just said you're, this is your second job ever. Yeah. My second my, film. Yeah. My God. Um, just because I have a feeling people are going to want to get to know you more after seeing this and high school. I usually ask this in my Collider Ladies Night series, but what is the, the movie, the performance or personal experience that first made you say to yourself, I have to be an actor and nothing else? Wow. That's a really, really good question. Um, you know, I feel like when I was really young, I, gr I grew up in a really um, creative household, um, but none of my family is in the industry at all. But I just remember being super young and watching films that I probably shouldn't have been watching that young and just being like, I want to do this. I want to play. And I feel like it was that innocent then. And as I got older, I just knew that I wanted tell stories that that I that I felt needed to be told but also experiences that I knew in my own life I could never experience so being able to put myself in those like to bring myself into those characters and 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 go back in time and and you know like live in the 80s or whatever like that that was something that really made me want to do it like I don't know in a simple way I need yes. an example now what's a what's a film that you shouldn't have been watching at a young age that you really grew attached to 
Um, probably like, I mean, I, I watched like Titanic at age six. I watched like, um, um, Goodfellas with my dad when I was like nine, like, you know, like Sounds stuff right. like that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like my I have an older brother. So when my dad and my brother were, were watching that stuff, I would sneak, sneak in and, and, you know, join them. But yeah. Carly, yeah. I'll throw a similar question your way. Are there any early films that influenced you and kind of shaped what you wanted to be able to do and share with the world as a storyteller? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I think, Sophia Coppola's The Virgin Suicides definitely did a number on me. I can't even tell you how many times I watched that movie over the course of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like it's so visually beautiful and it's such a feminine film, even though it has such a harsh edge to it. Um, it looks like a perfume ad at times and I love it. And it's 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 one of those things that I was like, here is art and fashion and music and photography all together and telling a story and I want to do that too. I love that example so so much. So I know you wrote your first feature but that is not the case on this film so is there anything about the experience of directing someone else's script that I guess caught you by surprise and maybe made uh, the directing process even more creatively for uh, freeing than if you had, had written the script yourself? Right. Um, I was involved with the project from day one, so I was very involved in the adaptation with Alex, our screenwriter, Alexandra Weir. So I felt totally involved and had like creativity in that part of the process too, so nothing caught me by surprise. Liberating, no, if anything, more pressure, but I also really valued the help I had as someone else like Alex has so much skill and talent and I got to lean on her in so many ways so maybe actually maybe actually then I did have more confidence being like no Alex is approved of this this is good let's let's go for it kind of thing very strong individual voices involved in this film but these movies do not get made without collaboration and speaking of that Amanda, I'll start with you on this. Can you share something about Carly as an actor's director that made all the difference for you on set where it was a scene that maybe you were shooting that was super daunting, super challenging, but because she gave you the support you needed, you were able to crush it? I feel like the thing that comes to mind instantly when you say, said that was Carly was so like um, gentle and I think that something that I really appreciated from her was even with all the chaos going going around on set, she she would come up to you and make sure you feel comfortable. And, and if she had notes for you, she would come and whisper them to you. And, and if she felt like you were in the zone, she wouldn't expect you to like look her in the eyes and like repeat what she said. And, and she was just very like, she would just like, it, it was almost like she was just putting her hand on your on your shoulder and and saying, you're doing great, but <laughs> but no. but also do it differently. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. But she was just, I really appreciated her just like giving notes and just being very like, like one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one with us. Yeah. Okay, I'm flipping it around now because as we've already established, many wonderful things coming uh, your way right now. And there's going to be a lot of other filmmakers out there who get to work with Amanda. So what was it that you appreciated about her as a collaborator on this that, you know, other filmmakers out there are going to get to bring to their projects? She's game for absolutely anything. She, firstly, so prepared. One time, I can give you a couple examples. One oh, time. Let's hear it. I walked in in the bath, like she was in the bathroom and I went to go check on her. We were about to shoot a scene and she was very emotional and I thought something had happened. Do you remember that? It's like, oh no, like what happened on set? But she was just preparing for her big emotional scene that I wasn't even, like I was, it was like two scenes away. So I was not paying attention to that part yet. And that she's just, was always so prepared for like the biggest emotional thing or the smallest thing always always prepared and always game. We, uh, one time at 3 a.m., we were fighting Sunrise, having to get like a really big moment in the film. And uh, the light was creeping in and we needed true night and something was going wrong. 
I had to toss out my shot list <laughs> and we didn't have Amanda's safety shoes to go in the water. Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, we have to wait for the safety shoes. We have to wait for the safety shoes. And Amanda's like, screw the safety shoes. And I'll like, look at her and she's just like 10 feet already in the water. She's like, let's do it. That's <laughs> and I really, as sometimes. an independent filmmaker, I'm not the biggest budget film. Like she's a lifesaver. Oh, that's yeah. so wonderful. So she just gave us a little insight into your process a little bit. I love asking this question because there's so many different ways to approach your work as an actor out there. And you're working with such an exceptional ensemble here. Can you give me an example of two uh, co-stars you have here who have total opposite uh, approaches to their work, where when you're their scene partner, you know you as their scene partner are going to get a completely different acting experience? I found that, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I don't think I really was working opposite. I don't think anyone really did anything that drastically different that I can, like, decipher but I think um I think depending on the scene and the character that they played like James for instance hit Sam is like such a like nutball like I think he's so like um like he brings a lot of like levels to his character I and I think that he was just he would just like to talk and you know hang out and all that and I found that 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 was totally right and I feel like I mean working with Sarah we, we worked together this entire shoot so I saw like tons of different sides of her but I feel like one thing that Sarah taught me too is um sometimes when you're not feeling present or, or grounded um it's it's sometimes good to you know like find the physicality in the room and you know like feel feel things around knowing that that these things are real and you know, and, and I think that helped me sometimes. So that's what I found. I don't know if that- Oh, that's so interesting. Was, can, yeah. you, can you give me an example of something like that where I, whether it can get as specific as like a, an object in the room that maybe informed your performance or what the character was going through or just maybe something more general where that helped yeah. you out? Yeah, I think generally just um, because um, like for instance, the um, what's it called? The snow globe, right? It's yeah. a snow globe. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the word. Um, things like that that C is so familiar with. Um, I just feel like sometimes I've been on sets and picked up props and been like, "This doesn't feel right holding it in my hand," and you have to just kind of play around with it and and see what comes naturally to you. And I feel like, you know getting comfortable and um, getting to know your surroundings really well comes like, so you're not like tripping around or not knowing where things are. I feel like that was like helpful to, to do. I can see how this benefits you and your craft, but as you're describing that, I'm like, maybe I should just do that in life more often so I am not walking around our sets tripping over everything. They're gonna make me let you go soon. So I wanna squeeze in a high school question. We've already talked about how it's early in your film career. I also believe that is the first major role you have on a TV series. So is there anything about the difference between shooting a feature film and a TV series that caught you by surprise? Um, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. Um, working on a show um, and I mean, I'd never shot anything in blocks before. So that was new, that was something new. And then also um, because on a feature film, it's it's usually just one director. On high school, we had, we had two directors. We had Clea who directed the first three episodes who is magnificent. A legend. Yes, and then we had our amazing director, Rebecca Asher, and she directed episode four and five, and then Clea came back. But so it was interesting to, to experience um, different like leaders, like on the same show, you know? So I found that that's definitely a difference in TV and film that I found, yeah. I'll wrap with a question you're not gonna be able to answer. You probably know where this is going. I'm a massive orphan black fan. Is there anything you could tease about the show that will convince fans like me that, oh, you're getting the look, that will get more of what we love, but evolve what we love into something that we didn't know what, that we needed before? 
don't know if I can say anything. It's all good. <laughs> you you know how to play the game. You you answered that question correctly. <laughs> Congratulations on Thank North so of Normal. Much. Congratulations on high school as well. I'm looking Thank forward to so everything much. you both do in the future. Enjoy your tiff. And to everybody out there, keep an eye out for the film. We will see you soon with more interviews from the Supper Suite.